Hey everyone, today I'll be guiding you through my calming, relaxing evening routine. I'll be sharing with you the tips and steps that I take to transition from a busy, hectic day of work to a calming, relaxing evening. Now we've all been indoors for far too long and that can be challenging in and of itself. So I hope that some of these tips help guide you to a better sleep. So after I've completed my work day, when I finished all of my tasks, the last thing I do is check my schedule for the next day. Now I'm one of those people that follows their schedule to a T. I believe it makes life simple. When I get my schedule out and look at the next day, I can think about how I'm going to feel. Have I got too much or too little on that? Do I want to add or edit something? It gives me perspective and allows me to get a glance on the next day so I can rearrange or reorganize based on the energy I feel today. Sometimes we feel so tired and exhausted, but without making that change and edit, we take that exhaustion in the next day. The other reason why I like looking ahead is that it gives me an opportunity to mentally prepare. I may have a podcast the next day and there's a guest that I'm really excited about and I may have to calm my nerves. Or sometimes it's an event or a meeting that I'm looking forward to and I just want to go over the bullet points before I go to bed. It gives me an opportunity to rehearse the day in advance and often I'll even sit and do a short visualization just to imagine how tomorrow will look. Now, some of my days are so back-to-back -back and busy that I often find that by the end of the day, I've done a lot of stuff, I've achieved a lot of stuff, I've ticked off everything off my to-do list and task list, but I haven't learned anything. I haven't fed my curiosity or my desire to understand new insights and new information. Now, if you're like me, you may have a perfectionist mentality and want to finish a book or complete a book or a documentary or a podcast, but sometimes there just isn't enough time. It's in these moments that I love taking out the Blinkist app because it allows me to digest really important and vital information in a really simple and synthesized way. I can flick through to a topic and recently I've been diving into Adam Grant's Think Again. He's a good friend, he came on the podcast twice and you absolutely loved his episode. And his book, Reading It Through Blinks, allows me to really put some of the principles into practice. So I read about persuasion today and even just one insight made me feel like I'd learned something positive. If you can end every day feeling like you've learned something new, you will always feel like you're moving forward. Now, this is usually the time that I'll go and have dinner with Radhi, maybe watch a movie or a TV show together and spend some quality time together. But I'm gonna skip a few of those parts to get you back into my routine. So usually during that quality time with Radhi, I'm not on my phone, I'm not on my devices, but it's at this point that I finally turn my phone onto airplane mode. I find that this habit is a game changer and a lifesaver at the end of the day because it can be so addictive to just mindlessly scroll through Instagram or TikTok just before you're about to go to bed and literally fill your mind up with so much stimulation that it can be really difficult to switch off. I found that letting go of your phone an hour before you go to bed allows you to have so much more stillness and calm internally and externally. I really believe that if you can master this one habit of not looking at your phone before you go to bed, it will truly change how you feel the next morning. My next favorite thing to do, this is probably one of the highlights of my evening, is taking out my five minute journal, the Genius Jay Shetty version, and filling out the rest of the reflections for the day. I found that this is one of the most calming and centering moments of my day because it gives me an opportunity to appreciate what I have, to remember the incredible moments that have happened throughout my day. See, we have so many highlights in our lives that we forget simply because we don't take a moment to allow them to go inward. For me, this is like taking a mental and emotional picture of a moment that I never want to forget. And as you can see, today I had the pleasure of interviewing Jocko Willink, who fascinated me with so many insights, Guy Raz from How I Built This, and then finally, just getting to spend so much quality time with my team. I purposely try to do this in a separate space, in an area that has that grounded energy. Remember, 
Time has memory and location has energy. When you do something in the same space every day, it builds a habit, it builds an energy, it builds a space. And so for me, creating that environment that helps me be reflective and introspective and grateful is really a big part of it. Now, you may have heard about something known as decision fatigue. I first came across this concept when reading The Organized Mind by Daniel Levitin. It's the idea that we make so many decisions first thing when we wake up in the morning that we run out of energy to make the most important decisions of the day. So usually when we wake up, we're trying to figure out what do I have for breakfast? What am I going to wear today? What do I have to do today? What tasks do I have to finish today? And then by the time you start the tasks, you've already run out of energy. How many of you can relate to that? In order to make my life that much easier and simpler, I decide what I'm going to wear the next day, the night before. I go into my closet and I'll pick out something that I feel matches the energy that I want to wear for the day ahead. That's why it helps to check your schedule the night before. So I know if I've got a podcast or an interview that I'm going to pick something smart, hopefully. And if I haven't, then I can just choose something comfortable and lazy. You'll also find that my wardrobe is slightly different from when I lived as a monk. At that time, we just had two sets of robes. You wear one, you wash one. I now have a much bigger choice, but I pretty much have the same things in lots of different colors. So a jacket like this or a t-shirt. And so they fit the same, they're simple. And this allows me to simplify and make picking what I'm gonna wear tomorrow a little bit easier. There's lots of studies to show that everyone from Steve Jobs to Mark Zuckerberg to Barack Obama and many, many others have practiced this way of selecting something that's similar to wear every day to make their mind focus on the bigger decisions. It's usually at this point that I'll brush my teeth and I'll also sneak in and I'd love you to Radhi. I love telling her how much she means to me and how special she is and just how much I've appreciated probably the amazing meal that she just cooked us or even the few moments that we exchange throughout the day. I always, always make sure that I get to tell her how much I love her. The penultimate thing that I do just before I go to bed is to pray and set my intention. This prayer usually involves thanking God, thanking my teachers, thanking my mentors. And it also is a prayer of wanting to be of service, of resetting my intention to not be distracted from wanting to serve, to have a positive impact on others, to be kind and loving, and to be an ambassador of compassion in everything I do. I often repeat the affirmations just before I go to bed to help me rest better. They are, I am happy, healthy and focused. This is how I'm trying to program my mind the night before for how I want to wake up the next morning. Remember, when you set an alarm, you set it the night before so that it wakes you up in the morning. You also program your mind in the same way. You set the intention or the affirmation the night before and you wake up with that energy. I'll sometimes add the affirmation, I am energized, nourished and ready to get on with my day. I want to wake up feeling that way. And often when we wake up, the first thing we say to ourselves is, I'm tired, groggy, or drained. So we're programming ourselves to feel a certain way and helping our subconscious mind prepare itself. The last thing I do is calm my breath. This is the most relaxing part just before I go to bed. And the breath work that I use is breathing in for four and out for more than four. You're really slowing down and extending that exhale, allowing your body to truly calm down, to truly relax, to truly feel that it is still and that it has the space that it needs. Another practice that I love to do often, especially if I'm struggling to get to bed, is I'll go through and scan my body and thank each of my body parts and organs for doing their work that day. My feet that kept me walking and standing Right? My hands that allowed me to hold my phone, to hold my wife's hand, or to eat the food that I have every day. The ability to thank my mind for being focused and being attentive that day. I find that scanning through my body and showing each part of my body gratitude, even the parts that I sometimes feel are letting me down, allows me to come with this refreshing perspective to the next day of being grateful for everything I have. If you've ever been in one of those situations where you've injured a part of your body or lost function of it, you know just how important it is. And I want to make sure that I'm grateful for every moment. Right now, Blinkist has a special offer just for our audience. Go to Blinkist.com forward slash J Shetty to start your free seven day trial and get 25% off a Blinkist premium membership. 
That's Blinkist spelled B-L-I-N-K-I-S-T dot com forward slash J Shetty to get a 25% off and a seven day free trial. I really hope that this video has helped you understand how you can guide yourself through a more calm and relaxing evening. I hope that you'll take just one of these habits and practice it for the week ahead and just watch how it changes your life. Thanks for watching.